a last message on anger, and I'm like, thank goodness. I'm, I'm done with anger. Amen? Are you done with anger? You can't be. You're going to have to have anger. You're going to have to have it. And we're going to have anger the rest of our life over things. It's just how to use anger and how not to be and how not to abuse anger or be used by it and used up by it. Because um, love is not easily angered. And, and the, the whole goal of this entire year and the, the Sunday messages that we've had since the beginning of January has been on the excellent life, how to live an excellent life. And the, the way to live an excellent life is with love. Love Love makes everything better. Love makes everything good. Next week, um, the, Paul goes on to say that love is not easily angered. And then he says, love keeps no record of wrongs. And so we have to talk about forgiveness. Because what, what unforgiveness is, is keeping record of wrongs. And it's storing up wrongs. The things that have been done to you, and it's not letting it go. When you can start to live in forgiveness, you don't keep record of wrongs anymore. Because it's just, it's really, it's over with, Okay. And so we're going to be five-week series on forgiveness starting next week. Today, I want to wrap up anger and talk to you about, first of all, it is a personal battle that we are going to have the rest of our life, okay? Because anger is an emotion and because the emotions are going to be a part of us as long as we're alive, then we're going to have anger. Every, you know, most every day of your life, something there's the capacity of, somebody has the ability or capacity to anger you and, and for you to get upset. I mean, we drive cars, we have children, we have jobs, we have coworkers, we have customers, we have bosses. So there's all kinds of potential for getting angry, okay? And so um, we, have, we have sports teams that we love that fail us, <laughs> Right? I mean, we needed the Giants. To, I don't even care about baseball, right? I love baseball. I don't even care because the Giants, they lost, and it makes me mad, right? So, and, I'm, and, and don't get, let's not even get started about the 49ers who at least they're, at least they're losing with class, right? Forget class. We want wins. All right. Okay, let's move on. But here, it's a personal battle, but here's what Paul says. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without. It's interesting how Paul links prayer and anger. And we're going to get into that on the second point. That prayer has a lot to do with how we handle anger and whether or not we handle anger properly or it handles us. Okay? And so Paul wants men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without our anger or disputing. And so how do we do that? Well, listen, no matter how hard we try to avoid it, it's just, it's a part of life. It's a, it's a regular, you're going you're gonna to see it, you're going to face it, you're going to feel it, you're going to sometimes really struggle with it, sometimes not as much, and, and it's just, we have to, we just, going in, anger is going to be an issue, but we can overcome. Because we control our emotions. Our emotions do not control us because we, we, we follow God and we know the word. In a perfect world, there wouldn't be anybody or anything to tick you off. And there's people that try to insulate themselves and build walls around themselves so that nothing makes them angry anymore. And that doesn't work. <clears throat> Heaven's the only place where we're not going to have anger anymore. Because anger won't be needed in heaven. There'll be nothing to be upset about. One of the reasons there will be no more need for anger is because when we see Jesus and we see God for who he is, really is, and we stand before God, we won't have another fear again. And we're going to look back on our life and, and wonder why were we stressed out about things when, when our God is this powerful. I just read this morning in Psalms 115 about, about David was saying, why, why do people boast about their gods? They have hands but can't feel. They have eyes but can't see. They have ears but can't hear. They have feet but can't walk. Our God is alive. And so, so David's saying it's, it's, it's not to us, but it's our, to our God who is the powerful one, who's the all-knowing one, who's the, who's the omnipotent one. He can be everywhere, and he can do anything, but their gods can do nothing. And when we see God for who he really is, we're going to go, oh, my goodness. Why didn't I believe in him more? Why didn't I trust in God more? Why didn't I pray more? Because 
Heaven's the only place we won't need anger again. But here on earth, it's just going to be a part of life. So let's learn to deal with it. You know, so um, what are we going to do about the people and issues that bother us, that tick us off, that frustrate us? Right now, what are we going to do about it? And you can't just ignore it because swallowing your anger, that's, that's, that's not good too. That's, that's passive aggressive. Okay, that's pass, the passive use of anger. And, and it will build up. It will store up. And then one day there's a volcano. But, you know, just ignoring it or just, you know, I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not going to let it bother me. You know? Your dog at home is saying, please get it out. Don't come home to me. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something that a dog does, and you're going to take it out on me. So we, we just, how are we going to deal with it, right? See, the answer is found in attacking all your external things. That's not the answer, but I'm telling you, that's the answer that I come up with oftentimes. Because that's the easiest answer. It's just because somebody's ticking you off, because somebody's bugging you, you lash out at them. You strike at them. But that's not the real issue. That's just the external issue. What we need to understand and address is the internal triggers of anger. Because that's what's important. There would be two ways that you could get, well, there's more than two ways, but let's just look at two ways you could get all the lights out in this room. One is you could take a gun and start shooting out all the lights. Or you could go and turn the light out. You just find the switch. If you find the switch, you hit the button, you hit the switch, they're off. Or you can just try and shoot them all out or scream them all out. Or you could get a ladder and get up there and yank them all out, okay? You could do that. Or you could just turn the switch off. You see, what, what the point of anger is, is, is not to shoot all the lights out, but find where the switch is. Because if you can turn that off, then you can deal with all of it. And so what are the triggers for our anger? We've already talked about it. We should know these. One, our pain, from our, the pains that we have, the hurts. And I'm not just talking, you know, emotional pains or, or but even physical pains we can have a physical injury or an illness that can cause us to be a lot more angry or irritable that leads to anger and lashing out so so there's all kinds of pains that we have in our body in our heart in our mind in our soul from the things that have happened to us in the past that we have to deal with and we deal with those pains and we deal with then fears as well Fears cause us to lash out. So those are the internal triggers for our anger. And if we can trust God more and pray more, our fears will start to dispel and dispense and, 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 and move away from us. And if we can forgive and, and trust God with our pain, that all things work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose, then what happens is we, the, the switch starts getting turned off. See, the fears that we have, they don't come from God. None of our fears come from God. And, and the only way that we deal with our pain is through love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Then that starts, to, that starts to ease the pain. And then we're not as irritable. We're not as angry. We're not as quick-tempered. Because the insides are getting dealt with. They're getting calmed. They're getting cooled, okay? See, this is, this is such a powerful, this is another life verse of mine, is that I, I, I memorized it in the King James. Here's the new King James. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if, if, we're, if I'm having fear over my finances or fear over the economy or fear over, over the world and fear over terrorism and fear over the drought and fear over the floods and fear over, I mean, my goodness, everybody's, you know, just wait for the next earthquake, right? Everybody's got us just living in fear over the next earthquake, right? I don't have to live in fear over that. Do I want those things? No. But to live in fear of them is, is, it doesn't do any good. Because we can't control those things. I can't control our economy. I can't control my, fi- I can't control people's giving at this church. Whether they are or not, whether they're supporting or not. We're a nonprofit organization. That's how our church functions. That's how the lights stay on. But I can't control that. So there's no sense in getting angry or worked up over it or becoming fearful of it because that doesn't come from God. I've got to trust in God. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. What God has given me is 
is internal. He's given me the power to walk in him. Part of the power that he's given me comes through his word. When I read the word of God, I'm infused with his power. When I pray, I'm infused with his power. When I trust, and the more I trust God with my life, the more empowered I am. He gives me power, and he also gives me, he gives me a, a sense of love, love for him and then love for others. And finally, a sound mind. I'm not, I'm not worrying as much. Because fear will cause us then to worry and become agitated. And the more worried and agitated and anxious we become, the more prone we are to lashing out. So understand the triggers in you that, 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 that kick off the anger and find where those triggers are. Lord, am I, am I lashing out? Am I, am I overreacting to things because of the pain that I have or the fears that I feel? And then, and then allowing those to go to the Lord. Not only is it a personal battle, it, it, it's, it's never a people battle. It's, it's a personal battle, yes. It's something that we all have to deal with. And nobody else can take care of your anger for you. No one else can calm your fears but you and Jesus. That's it. You and Jesus. Now, you can come to people and get counseling and get the scripture and get prayer, and that will help. But it's really the God that's doing it. He's just using a vessel. But, but your fears are yours, and you have, to, you have to battle those with God. Nobody else can for you. And also your pains, you have to forgive. You have to let it go. No one else can forgive for you. It has to be you. It's a very personal issue. It's a very personal battle that you and I have. Okay? You don't know my pains like I do, and you can't, you can't let them go for me. I have to let them go for me. So it's, it's always going to be a personal battle, but it is never a people battle. Ephesians 6.12 says this. Our struggle is not with people. Basically, that's what Paul's saying here. The fight that we're in, the war that's being waged, is not people. It's spiritual. Our struggle's not against flesh and blood, not against people, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, if you don't believe in a, in, in a spiritual realm, then you're, one day you will. I was talking with a friend yesterday, and he said, you know, we were talking about, about somebody, and, 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 uh, and they said, you know, I don't, I don't think they believe in God. I think they're, he was saying, I, think, I believe he's, he's atheist. And he doesn't believe in God. And I just said, well, well, one day he will. Every one of us will. Either now or then. You remember the old Fram oil filter thing? You know, pay us now or pay us later. Pay me now or pay me later. You, we'll believe now or we'll believe later. But at some point, everyone will believe in a spiritual realm. Because Revelation 21 says that we're all going to stand before the great white throne of judgment. Small and great alike. So we're all going to believe in a spiritual realm Someday, but trust me, the spiritual realm is more of a reality than, the, than this realm that we're living in, the physical realm. Because the spiritual realm has been before time. God is eternal. You and I, we're everlasting. Everlasting means that we were created, we had a beginning, but we have no end. We're everlasting. God is eternal. He is the only eternal one. That means he had no beginning. He, had no end. he has no end. And so the spiritual realm has been in existence forever. This physical realm was created by God. And so the spiritual realm is more real than this realm, more legitimate, has greater effect but we have to understand that, that the battles that we face with anger is more spiritual than it is physical. It's not about people. It's, it's about what's going on behind the See, there's, we must bear in mind, it's not, people are not the problem. And I want to dispel this notion once and for all. We can never say this again legitimately. That person makes me so mad. You, you get mad all on your own. Nobody can make you mad. Can people push your buttons? Oh, yeah. 
You have kids, don't you? <laughs> Enough said, right? You have, a, you have a spouse, right? So no one makes us mad. People can, can push our buttons, but it's, look, anger's our choice. That's how we're choosing to deal with the situation, is with anger. It's not the actions of others. It's not the words of others. Because every time somebody pushes our button, we have a choice of, of how we're going to deal with that. The emotion of anger can start to rise, but we can, we can say, wait a minute, this isn't worth getting upset over. It's not worth getting upset over. I said, I quoted this scripture to you a couple weeks ago. Proverbs 15.1, a gentle answer turns away wrath. So that means somebody's coming at you angry. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs it up. There's a choice. You have a gentle word or a harsh word, your choice. One is going to perpetuate anger. The other is going to cool it down. So it's, it's up to us. It's the choice that we make. We don't have to get angry. Second thing is that there will always be someone or something behind the scenes or beneath the surface. That's the spiritual realm that Paul was talking about in Ephesians 6.12. We wrestle or struggle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and rulers and authorities of, and, and spiritual forces of the spiritual realm. So there's always something going on behind or beneath. Wisdom and understanding gives us great patience, Sol Solomon tells us in Proverbs. So if we can step back, and it, sometimes all you need is a couple seconds, but if we can step back and say, okay, what's really going on here? It might, we might not lash back, or we might not lash out at all. Somebody may be attacking us or coming at us, and we, and we can stop and say, wait a minute, there's something going on that's deeper than what I'm seeing right now. They're, they may be really hurting over something. And this right here is the issue that they're launching their attack on. But this isn't the real issue that they're upset about. There's a, there's a pain that they have that's deep. Or there's a fear that they're being consumed by. Now, wouldn't that make us more understanding of them and less likely to want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like that, but more likely want to pray for them? I mean, now, it wouldn't be wise if somebody's coming at you in anger and you go, oh, hey, brother, l l let's just pray for a minute. You might get socked in the face. And you know what? You would probably deserve it. I don't even know if I'd pray with you. Because, because that's, not, that's not the time to go spiritual on people. And to pull out the old, well, brother, you know, a Christian shouldn't act like that. Pow! You know what I mean? Just that, that's not the soft, gentle answer. Okay? That, that speaks judgment to people. That speaks, that speaks uh, arrogance at people. But, but you pray for them silently in your own head. You, use, your, use, your, use your inner voice, right? And pray to, the, pray to the Lord right there for them. In fact, at times like that, um, you know, getting at them, angry at them, there's something inside them that's churning and burning, that, that's causing this. And so if we can just keep a level head, choose not to get angry, and, and, and let, let, it, let it calm down just a hair before we go back at it, something inside them. See, the only, the only problem is it's just everything becomes physical realm. When we get mad, everything gets physical realm. It's who we see. It's what's in front of us. It's, we get so mad that, that there's, there's a piece of sheetrock in front of us that needs a good fist, right? I mean, something we've got to strike out or scream out or lash out somehow because it's just at that moment, it's just what we see in front of us. To, if we could step back. And in, in, in just a blink of a moment, ask God, Lord, what's really happening here? That takes us out of the physical realm where, where we see the strike and puts us into the spiritual realm where, where we can hear his voice. 
I've done both. I've done both effectively. <laughs> well, one of them would actually be ineffectively. But I was good at lashing out. So would that be I was, I was effective? No, I was ineffective. I have lashed out and struck, struck out towards people when I've been angry. And, and I've also allowed the Lord to speak to me by asking him what's really going on here. I've done both. When, I, when I've asked the Lord and I listen, always works out. Situation gets settled down very quickly. When I've come back, it's gone upward. So I just, what I'm having to learn, and I'm getting older, so I should be picking this up quicker, but I'm kind of dumb, you know, right? I'm just a little stupid. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not as quick to learn this, but there's a spiritual realm that's going on all the time around us. And if we can, by prayer, get into that spiritual realm, takes us out of the physical realm, then, then, then we deal with things differently. Much better, much better. What's really going on, God? See, the real answer to anger, it, it, this is the real answer. It's, it's, it's not people, it's spiritual. It's spiritual and it's prayer. Paul wants men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and disputing. The more I pray, the more I pray for people in my life that anger me, the more I pray in, in situations where anger is happening, where aggression is happening, the more I pray later about an incident, I'm much more loving, much more understanding, much more forgiving, much more cool-headed. My tongue seems to be much more controlled. But when I'm not in prayer and I'm going, I stay in the physical realm, lash out, speak out, get bitter, get angry, stick with stuff and churn over it a lot. I worry, I fear. So prayer is what affects the insides of us and others. It's, this, it's, it's the only thing. God is the only one who can change a heart. God's the only one that can really help us deal with pain and deal with fear. And God's the only one that can heal a person's pain that you know or, that, or, 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 or calm their fears that you love. God's the only one. And so what we have to do is get, get in the habit of going to the spiritual realm through prayer and allowing God to help us with the situation. But here's the thing with anger, and this is why it's always a personal battle. Anger empowers you. It's, it's, it's almost, it can be false power in that, you feel like because of the adrenaline that's happening, because of the endorphins that are shooting, because of the blood pressure that's rising, because of the heart rate that's increasing, you feel like you can run through a wall or run through a person or shout down a boss or, you know, correct a child. And so what happens is anger gives us this false sense of power and, and it makes us feel like we don't need any help. But prayer is what gives us the real help that we need. God's power. And there's nothing false or phony about God's power. It's real, it's effective, and it's life-changing. And you, you and I, we have to have God's power to, to overcome anger. And, and God's power to overcome the fears and the pains of those that we love. Praying for their heart, praying for their hurts, praying for their, their hopes and fears, and, and, and asking God to change them. Because my dear, dear brothers, it, it, take note of this. We should be quick to listen to God. Quick to ask God. Quick to listen to Him. Slow to, slow to react verbally. And then slow to become angry. Because man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. In, in me? But here's the thing. Here's the, the other side to this. When I get angry, it doesn't bring about the righteous life that God desires for me. But what it also does is it doesn't bring about righteousness for them because it could tempt them to, to, to respond back to me in anger. And I could lead a brother or sister into sin because of my anger. It could cause them to get angry back. Where if I were not angry, if I were quick to listen to God, stay in the spiritual realm through prayer, then I might not get angry and then lead somebody else to get angry. Because that's what anger does. It feeds anger. 
It promotes anger. Does that make sense? Well, let's bow our heads and pray. Okay, the first thing that I want you to pray about, I'm going to ask you to pray about, okay? There's somebody in your life that you may have thought of that makes you angry or that has been ticking you off or bugging you lately. Rather than asking God to help you with your anger, let's turn it into love. And right now, I'd like you to ask God to heal them of their hurt. Oh, now this could be hard because you may not like them at all. I mean, can we be honest and just real for a second? You may not like, you. in fact, you may be a born-again Christian loving Jesus and hating that person. It's possible. I've done it. I've had hate in my life. Right now I can tell you, God is my witness, I don't hate anybody. God is my witness, I've forgiven everybody that's, that's hurt me or ripped me off or done anything. I'm just, I'm living in forgiveness and I'm, don't, I don't have any hate. That doesn't mean I walk perfectly in love, but I just know this, that hating people doesn't help. But there's somebody in your life that you may even hate, and if you can just say, you know what, Lord, the reason that they're living the way that they're living or acting the way they're acting or doing the things that they're doing or saying the things that they're saying is because they are really hurting or they are living with fear. There's nothing, there, oh, there's few things worse in this world than living with fear. Fear is the great limiter of life. It, is, it, 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 will, it will restrict people from being who God created them to be. Fear does. Fear is a restrictor, a limiter. And there may be that person in your life that, that's really bugging you or got you confused or shaking your head or scratching your head or whatever. They just need Jesus to heal them. So you, you just pray. You say, oh, I don't even know how to pray for them. Here's a good way. Lord Jesus, you can say their name. I just ask you right now, that God, if you, if you would heal their heart. I know they're hurting. Maybe you even know what they're hurting about. Or I know they're living with some fears about this or that. And I just pray, God, that you would touch their life. And then here's the next thing. This is a big one. God, use me. Just like Isaiah said. God's saying, who will I send to the nations? Who will go? And take my word. And Isaiah said, here am I, send me. And so then God cleansed his lips. Isn't that interesting? God had an angel cleanse his lips so that he could be a mouthpiece for God. So, so we pray and ask God to use us. Here am I, God, send me. And then God wants to now clean your lips so that you don't say things to them that's going to propel their hurt. Or that's going to instill more fear. You say things to them that's going to dispel their fear and going to calm or dispel their, their pain and calm their fear. You pray for God to heal them, and then you pray for God to use you. See, that's how we deal with anger. Anger is a warning sign. Remember, it's a bell that's going off. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. That's when we go to asking God. That's when we turn to prayer. That's when we go to the spiritual realm instead of staying in this physical realm where we'll lash out. Father, I love you and thank you that you're not, you're not angry with us. I just want you to know how cool God is with you. He's, he's cool with you. God is so cool. He is so loving. He is so good. And he's good with you. He, God, you know how God dealt with his anger? The cross. God was angry over sin. And Jesus said, I'll go and take care of all of our anger. I'll, I'll be the sacrifice. You know, all the wrath of God was poured out on Christ Jesus. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, we're no longer children of wrath. We're no longer appointed to God's wrath. He's not mad at us anymore. Jesus took all our curses. So we can live free with God. And I want to I conclude with this scripture. God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. So pray for those that you love. In Jesus' name, amen.